Hello, welcome to Breakthrough. Today we're going to be making the case for using the AutoCard technique for the treatment of symptomatic cartilage defects with Christopher Krulin from Sacramento, California and Gian Salzman from Zurich, Switzerland. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Chris. Hello, Chris. Now, to start off, Gian, can you tell us about a recent case where you've seen the benefits of the AutoCart technique? Absolutely, Chris. I have a nice case I would like to show you. My case is a 44-year-old male subject with no previous left-sided knee history. He suffered a misstep and immediately had sharp pain at his left-sided medial knee joint. He showed up in my outpatient clinic on initial x-ray. We saw a varus aligned left-sided mechanical leg axis. We didn't see any signs of early osteoarthritis, but we already saw even on standard imaging methods, some subchondral changes at his medial femoral condyle. On subsequent MRI imaging, coronal images on the left side, we saw a full thickness cartilage defect with an overloading bone marrow edema in the back of the defect. Other than that, it was a normal appearing MRI intact meniscus, intact ligaments and no signs of early osteoarthritis. To sum up that case, we had a 44-year-old male, usually sporting active subject who had a full thickness cartilage defect at his medial femoral condyle plus a tibial sided varus deformity. So we decided to proceed with surgery in that case. During initial arthroscopy, we saw full thickness cartilage defect at his medial weight bearing condyle, approximately four to five square centimeters. We decided to proceed with an autocart procedure in standard fashion, where we took away healthy cartilage from the defect edge and transplanted our autocart procedure in standard fashion. Finally, under dry conditions, we cycled the knee joint to really prove that the transplant is stable and we, do, we can do early rehabilitation without any problems. During the same operation, during the same intervention, we performed a high tibial valgus producing osteotomy, also in standard fashion, to unload the medial compartment. And as always, intraoperatively, we looked at the leg axis to have a straight or slightly valgus alignment of his left-sided knee joint. One year postoperatively, the patient was uh, very satisfied with the procedure, having a Lysholm score of 81 points and a very good sporting activity with a Tegner score of four. At that time, the osteotomy had healed already and we decided for plate removal. At the same time, we decided to perform a second look arthroscopy, even though the patient had no real pain at uh, his transplant site. During second look arthroscopy, we saw a nicely integrated, well maturated transplant at this medial condyle. The tibial cartilage looked very nice as well as the medial meniscus. Under consequent x-rays after plate removal, we still saw a very nice and straight leg axis. Osteotomy had healed, still no signs of early osteoarthritis. In this case, we decided to perform a follow-up MR imaging of this patient. And here we saw a nicely integrated autocar transplant at his medial condyle, iso-intense signal, uh, and very silent subchondral bone. In this particular case, we performed a T2 mapping analysis to see how the transplant quality really is, to look at the collagen content, and we saw also very satisfying T2 mapping results in this particular subject. Finally, 1.5 years post-operatively, the Lysholm score with regard to the plate removal increased to 86 points. The Tegna score was still a little better at four to five points out of 10 and the patient returned to uncomplicated and pain-free tennis sporting activity and was very satisfied. John, that was a great case with incredible clinical and radiographic outcomes. Now, Chris, I know you primarily focus on foot and ankle pathologies. Can you discuss autocart technique applications in your area of expertise? Yes, I can. I have an excellent case to show you. Okay, so my case is a 29-year-old graduate student who fell while bouldering. She presented to my clinic unable to bear weight, and she had already had an MRI. And when you look at the MRI, you see edema on the lateral Taylor dome, as well as that thin black line representing an osteochondral defect. I got a CT as well to evaluate and make sure I didn't miss anything, and that again showed that same defect. 
I brought the patient to the operating room and started to evaluate her cartilage with a probe. You can see the probe on the healthy cartilage and then sliding over and falling into that defect. I break up the cartilage a little bit to make it easier for the graft net, as well as to allow me to evaluate the bony pathology. Here I'm sucking up the autologous cartilage into the graft net using a four millimeter bone cutter. And then at the end, I evaluate my lesion by drying out the joint and making sure that I have a stable cartilage border, as well as I've removed any bony pathology. I then take my autocart graft and place it into my arthropaddle and then insert that into the lesion for fill. Here's a final picture of the fill of the lesion. You can see that that autocart graft is about 80% height in the lesion compared to the surrounding cartilage. That allows for any hypertrophy or growth of that autocart graft, as well as a good cup or rim to support and hold in the autologous fibrin sealant that I'm about to place. I'd like to point out too that in the ankle, the autocart technique is very good arthroscopically. Here's the arthropaddle inserting into the tibia, and you can also use it as stated into the talus as well. My rehab protocol for these patients is two weeks non-weight bearing in a splint, and then at two weeks in clinic, we transition them to a boot to begin range of motion and physical therapy. At four weeks, I allow progressive weight bearing, and then at eight to 10 weeks, that's my goal to get them out of the boot. I allow them to start running or doing higher impact activities at around four to six months. I'm happy to report that this patient returned to activity and had no pain. That was another incredible case. So Jean, Chris mentioned that his consideration of bone pathology in this case, do you consider the subchondral bone in your patients as well? Yes, absolutely, Chris. The subchondral bone is a very important structure in any cartilage repair procedure because it's giving you a stable fundament for your overlying cartilage repair, which is why you always have to identify and potentially address any subchondral bone pathology, which is why I've been very aggressive lately in performing cancellous bone plasty. Thank you, Jean, and thank you both again for sharing your experiences and making the case for the autocart technique. Now, to learn more about the autocart technique for the treatment of symptomatic cartilage defects, be sure to visit jointpreservation.arthrix.com and tune into our other breakthrough episodes, including innovative solutions, technique play-by-play, -play, and lessons learned. Thank you for joining us.